G'day, g'day. How you going? Mm. Just drank a litre of milk. Death or glory. Ah. So it has been a busy couple of weeks. In the last seven days, I've worked uh, just under 84 hours. So no video last weekend because I was out trucking, but now I have fried my logbook to within an inch of its life and I have to have a break. So here we are. Um, but on my last 24 hour break, I, it was a Thursday, um, so I went down to Brizzy and got my new bow strings put on my bow. Um, I have to go back down and pick it up, which is annoying. I didn't realize it was more than a one day process. Um, but just down the road from the archery shop, a uh, uh, gun room is two doors down from the archery shop and I figured I would pop in there and uh, see what they had available in the way of slugs. Um, because I haven't tried any slugs yet and uh, they, for whatever reason, never show up in any of my feeds or anything. Um, pretty much, I always have to go in there and look. Um, so yeah, it'd be great if you advertised, but shout out to the mad lad who recognized me in real life down there too. He was pretty stoked. I wanted to talk to you, but you looked real busy. Seems like Ian's cracking the whip on you and you're rushing around, so I figured I'd better let you finish whatever you were doing. But uh, yeah, how you going? Anyway, um, among other things, I picked up some H&N 25 Grizzlies. These are a very cheap slug. Um, the Grizzlies have been available in Australia through H&N uh, Sport dealers for a little while. Um, they sort of predate most of the other slugs uh, and they're kind of a strange option. Um, they this 150 piece tin was $12, 12, 12 bucks for 25 cal slugs, 31 grain, 25 cal slugs. And I'm like, wait, what? 12 bucks? I did the numbers, $12 for 150 makes them 8.3 cents a shot. Um, and if you compare that to um, pretty much everything else on the market, they're cheaper than all of them. So this may very well be the cheapest like hunting grade slug, I suppose, that you can get really, at, at least in my area. Um, and that's in Aussie dollars too. So very cheap, surprisingly cheap. I didn't realize they were that cheap, but we got them. So we're gonna test them today. I'm gonna to, um, uh, tune them up so that their impact shoots them probably 950 to 1000, wherever it may lay, um, whatever's easy to get. I think they just need a fair amount of boot to get them going and, and stabilized. But uh, with that said, H&N does say that the minimum muzzle energy is 40 joules or 29.5 foot pounds. I don't know what that minimum is for, I can't think of a good reason for doing that, putting a minimum muzzle requirement, um, because for like 40 joules or 29.5 foot pounds with this projectile weight is like 660 feet per second. Let's just pretend like I didn't do that maths on a calculator. That's really slow. Um, so I don't know what, what they were, what, what they mean by minimum muzzle energy, so whatever. Um, but we'll, we'll test accuracy much faster than that. Um, at, and they, they also say that um, it's, it's sort of a max range, max effective range of about 50 meters with a BC of 0 0.07. Um, I can see why they would put a 50 meter range on it. They don't seem to have the highest of quality control for this particular projectile, but um, we'll probably shoot it at 50 meters, see how they go. And if it's not too windy, we'll have a crack at hundred as well. And then later on, I will tune it right down back so that it's nice and quiet. And um, we'll do a bit of night hunting with them, hopefully. Hopefully, today has been a very frustrating day. So I don't know if I will. So I did, I took 50 of these little badoobas out of the 10, a random sample because I couldn't be bothered doing all 150, so this is gonna have to do. Um, so, 50 projectile sample size. Almost all of them were 31.3 grains. There were three of them that were 31.2 grains, and four of them that were 31.4 grains. 
That's weird for such cheap ammo. Um, I have sorted out tins of JSB pellets, and I think JSB claims plus or minus 2% wiggle room for their um, different types of ammo, and um, you normally get a bigger range of weights than that. Like the, it, They're pretty tightly grouped together as far as weight goes. Condition, um, when you look at them, I sort of, I'd say it's like a six or a seven out of 10. They're pretty good, but not the best. So I'm gonna give them a 6.5 out of 10 peanuts for uh, their score on the condition because they have like a, a fairly dull finish. There's slight marks and scratches and little deformations in each one, but they're not terrible. Like they're, they're in pretty good nick. They all look usable. Uh, I found five uh, out of that sample of 50 that had noticeable damage. So like damaged hollow point or a damaged, like a bent skirt or something like that. Um, and I, I think that comes from this style of packaging. Um, it's sort of, there's no padding in this, like with the, with the JSB ones, I almost never find a deformed pellet in a JSB tin because they have um, a little bit of padding above and below it and they don't pack them in there too tight. Um, they seem to sort of survive a little bit better. If you haven't noticed, JSB is like my yardstick for good ammo. So I like JSB, they seem to shoot pretty good for me. Um, your mileage may vary. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. But good enough. Good enough for $12 anyway. That's like, it's really cheap ammo, very, very cheap. Um, and it looks like it's gonna work pretty good, especially for the money if you take into account how much you're gonna spend on a tin like this compared to the higher end stuff with much tighter quality control like the FX hybrids. Right, let's try them out. All right, so minimal faff. I've sort of gotten my uh, tuning set up down pretty quick now. I've got a good idea of where everything needs to be from the get-go. So that was uh, two and a half magazines and um, we're now shooting 135 or, well that's what the gauge says anyway on my regulator. Um, I have a bigger plenum than a stock impact. I think these two, the standard impact plenum plus this titanium plenum are somewhere in the neighborhood of between 70 and 80 cc's. And I've got, how much hammer spring do I have? Might as well share, because everyone's gonna ask me, even though your gun's different, but whatever. I don't know, I'll measure it later and put it here. But for now, uh, we've got four lines showing on the uh, valve. The valve's basically wide open, um, and the hammer spring wheel set to max is giving me between 946 and 950 feet per second. So pretty, pretty stout. It's uh, good enough, good enough for what I want to do anyway. Hopefully the barrel harmonics are sweet. Um, I'll try a few different hammer wheel settings when we get down there um, to test the accuracy, but I suspect it'll probably be fine. And for what it's worth, this is not the superior liner. This is the um, Smooth Twist X Slug Liner A in 25 calibre. Uh, and I believe when I measured it last time, it came in at 1 in 21, maybe 1 in 22, can't quite remember. Doesn't matter, 1 in 20 something, so it's pretty quick. Um, and it's not the new Superior Liner, this is an older Slug Liner. So, And this is the first time it's seen slugs, I'm usually shooting pellets through it, so. Good times, good times. To the range. Home, home on the range. We're back at 50 meters now. Looks ever so slightly low. It's actually quite nice and quiet. I must have just had ever so slightly too much hammer spring on those top settings because it's really sounding much better now. All right. Have a look at that. All right, here we are at 50 meters. We'll measure the uh, outside edge to outside edge. It's uh, less than an inch, 24 and a half millimeter unis. That's not terrible. I think that's uh, acceptable as a uh, as a budget ammo. 
I do kind of want to see how it goes at 100 meters though. So I might shoot another group here and get it zeroed because we're sort of a little bit off center. So I'll get it on and uh, it would appear that uh, the baby Jesus, Odin and Buddha have blessed me with a day that isn't super windy for a change. It's warm, muggy, but uh, not bad. So let's, let's check this 25 meter group as well while we're here. How big was that? We got 20, 20 millimeters. So, hmm, all right. See if we can get uh, something similar at 100 meters and see how that goes. But let's get this zero done properly first. Pretty good, slight breeze, slight breeze. Nothing to write home about though. We looked a little bit low, in keeping with our theme of relatively unimpressive groups. <laughs> that one didn't feel good. It looks all right through the scope, I think I can see it. So, I overshot the zero a smidgey, but that is a much better group. I didn't realize that was as tight as it was. That's 15 millimeters, or thereabouts at 50 meters. So maybe they do have some potential. This could all, I haven't been doing this type of shooting for quite a while, so uh, it could be that, um, it's just me being rusty and these are actually a little better than I'm letting on. But they do look promising. They're only three round groups, but I don't have that many of them to shoot, so I would rather save them for hunting. But um, yeah, cool. I reckon I'll give it two clicks to the right and then uh, go straight to 100. Because the ballistic coefficient is so good on these, they should only drop about a mil, maybe a mil and a half. So it should be pretty easy. I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, that's my alpaca and one of my sheep over there and he's basically been adopted by the alpaca it's pretty funny totally ignores his mum and his uh, and his auntie and they just play fight and snuggle and basically just live together instead <laughs> right looks like my alpacas have come to say hello they're gonna get a rude fright and of course at 100 meters why wouldn't there be a big patch of bindies I didn't think this through at all. I regret all of my decisions in my whole life up to this point. Uh, all right, let's see if we can do this without getting stabbed. All right, round one unsuccessful. I'm gonna give it at least two MRAD of extra elevation because we're not even on paper. I think we're landing short. Perhaps this, uh, Hammer spring setting is a little bit too slow for it. Okay. All right. Whatever. Let's go and look. All right. Well, that's less than terrible. That's all right for a, for a windy one. I think these three here are the only three unmarked. So that was with two mils of elevation and a slight right hand hold. So there's a fair distance between these two, but I think that was wind. They do have some interesting marks on them. It could be that the round is tumbling a little bit, wobbling perhaps, and getting a little bit of a tail tear. But this one's nice and round, so it could also be that there's just nothing behind the paper. But uh, those two together, that's a, a fingernail at 100 meters. So if we can get three or four or five of them in the middle, I'll be very happy with that. But I've got something to, uh, to zero off now, so I'll zero the scope for 100 meters. We'll see what happens. I think uh, if this doesn't work super great, I might crank it right back up to uh, full power and see how that goes. A little bit less time in the air, a little bit louder, a little bit less pleasant, but uh, you know, whatever for science. Science bros. So that's a bit of a worry. It's either a very big group or something's wrong. Hmm. Seems consistent, consistently low. I'm not aiming at that gong. <laughs> All right, I am gonna give it some extra elevation then. See if we can capitalize on this relatively quiet patch. That was paper, that's good. Quickly, quickly while the wind is down. Oh, I'm rushing a bit. A little bit of wind down that end. All right. So, 
this one and these two of course my pen doesn't want to work why would it we'll just mark them with my previous three round group and this one here that's one two three four five so if i had a stopped at three rounds i would have this lovely little tiny group here even if i stopped at four we would have had that one which is a very good group but it appears that i still have a few little flyers so there's a good chance that flyer was me but that is ever so slightly over an inch for those four rounds at 100 meters so i think i'll definitely have another crack at it i'll um bring my zero down again as well and make sure that for whatever reason it seems like it keeps dropping but uh, the groups are good so if i can get another lull in the wind and print a five round group on there that's less than an inch i'll be extremely impressed especially for 12 dollars at 10. i mean come on now oh these bindies are killing me starting to get a little bit shaky okay oh it's a horrible place to shoot what am i doing with my life ah make good choices stay in school i tell you what after the working week i've had it feels very nice just to get out and do some shooting i feel like my uh my zen is coming back all right so here we are we've got one two three four five so full size four fingers that's probably if that's one inch that will be one two three inches for the whole group but most of the group is probably about an inch and a half i left my bloody measuring thing back there so I think a reasonable expectation of these slugs at 100 meters, assuming that you have the right tune, you've done your own quality control, you know, you've rejected some of the, the damaged ones, you know, you sort them out by weight, you wash them, lubricate them, do all the things that you really need to do to uh, get the best out of straight lead ammo like that. I reckon you could expect somewhere between an inch and a half and two inches, and on your tighter groups you might get down towards one inch because we did see some really good potential there and I'm only doing this with the short amount of time I have. So if you decide that you want to uh, put some effort into it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if you get some much better results than what I had. Later on, after the range shooting, I did go out for a walk around, uh, a bit of a night hunt, but I didn't see much. Uh, there wasn't much going on in the way of stuff to shoot, so there wasn't much interesting footage caught. There is a whole bunch of my little froggy friends have come out of the woodwork and they're, they're surviving and thriving now that there's so few toads, which is good. I'm happy to see that, but... As far as the performance of the ammunition goes, I did take two shots on the toads that I saw and missed. And it seems that when you wind it down to like a really quiet slow power, even though it is um, still going faster than the minimum standard of 660 feet per second, I think mine were going at about 700 and something. It's just very, very inconsistent. You need to be shooting at something quite large to get any hits on target and straight away it reeked of unreliability for actually getting a humane shot so after i missed the second time i was just like nope let's cut this away it's not happening so i even though they are a pest species they still need to be treated humanely so i think it's uh, at this stage i'm gonna have to use some different ammo to do that job so probably switch back to pellets for that particular type of hunting i will try some other slugs in the future i have some the of the normal hnn slugs to try the 217s in uh, two different weights i will uh, i'll get them on in the next couple of weeks and we'll see how we go with them but as far as super quiet low speed stuff goes not recommended you, your mileage may vary i don't know but uh, in my gun, the way it's set up at the moment, um, it's not a good idea. If you like the video, make sure that you like and subscribe. We've tipped over the, the 5,000 subscriber mark, so thank you for subscribing if you have already. Um, my celebratory giveaway stickers, I have uh, settled on a vinyl design this time so that they're a little bit more durable than the previous sort of glossy paper stickers. Um, I haven't finished the design yet, but I'm going to do that today and I'm going to order them and get them printed out and then hopefully by the next video uh, you'll be able to find out how you can win yourself some free stickers. So stay tuned for that. Okay, bye. Bye.